welcome to this week's piece. Now, this is just the cutest, tiniest little low boy type situation. It's in a bit of rough condition. I'm a little sad about the locks. I contemplated drilling them out, but the way that they had it filled made me think that even the locks would be fully filled with whatever it is that they used. Because you could see it in the top and in the front. I just... I don't know. If I had more time, I maybe would have tried removing them and breaking everything down and seeing what was happening, but as it was, this thing needed a bit of work. So I opted just to leave those there. Yes, that is a huge hole. You can see that they have flipped the drawer bottom over to get extra use out of, which is totally fine, but then it's just missing a lot of it. Um, they did cover it with packing tape and some sheet metal, so there's that. The top has also been put on um, not straight, which I just think is funny. And just overall, it's pretty grimy, but I love it. I think it's such a little treasure, so I'm excited to get working on it. To clean this, I'm going to be using liquid sandpaper, mostly because it is an excellent degreaser and I'm working inside in my basement right now, so I don't want to have to deal with a lot of sanding dust in here. It's very, very rainy outside at the moment and I didn't want to go to the shop, so <laughs> I'm using the liquid sandpaper and you'll see what I mean about it being a really good degreaser. I mean, you could see years and years of this build-up gunk on this thing. It's not great, but sometimes it's what we get. So I just have a cloth to start out with, and then I'm going to pour a little extra of the liquid sandpaper and I'm going to go in with my sanding sponge. I will dip the sanding sponge in this. These sponges are from Chalk Mountain. Um, you can get them wet and wring them out and do all that stuff. So this is going to help with uh, kind of like a scuff sand, but also really, really get all that grunge off there. And you can see how amazing that works just to do it with the sanding sponge there. And I'm not pressing terribly hard. I'm not going through tons of layers of finish. I'm just getting that surface grime off and taking the shine down. Not that there was a ton of shine to begin with. I'm gonna use the same sponge over the top. It also was equally grimy. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell from this shot, but it was, uh, I mean, impressive. So you can see the color kind of coming back and I actually enjoy the way that the top was looking as I was taking everything back. You could kind of see like mar marks and just all of this life that it has lived and I wanted to kind of embrace that and keep it so I was hoping that as I was getting this thing all cleaned up that I could actually keep the kind of situation that it had going on. For this repair, it, I, it was super easy. I mean, I obviously had to replace this drawer bottom. <laughs> the top two drawers bottoms were fine, but this one you saw missing most of it. That's an exaggeration, but it's unusable. So I'm just pulling out all these nails. Um, this thing had been repaired. Uh, I'm going to say repaired in quotation marks because it's not, it's not how I would have repaired it, but... Um, so it had been repaired a multitude of times. You can see different types of nails and screws and things throughout the years. And I love that. I love seeing that people loved something enough to want to fix it and keep it. So I just, I love that part of these old pieces. So anyways, I removed that drawer bottom and then I'm just kind of removing everything else just to make my life a little easier as I'm working so hardware comes off I'm removing the top as well and I'll set that off to the side and then I don't have to worry about getting paint on that as I'm painting everything you can even see paint on the inside of the carcass there like it's it's been through some stuff and I think that's really cool so 
So to begin the painting process, I'm just going to start with a base layer of Mellow White. I'm doing that all over the front and then of course the drawers as well because I want to do a painting on the front of this one. It just has a nice flat face and I find I'm just really enjoying doing these right now. So that's where I was headed with this and I wanted to do something that would be kind of complementary to the top. Like I said, I wanted to kind of keep that how it was. So I wanted to do something that was kind of dark and, and kind of old feeling like that. So this is an interesting step. I started with Mellow White as my base, which is a, a typical step for me. However, I let that dry and then I'm going in with Blackboard and I'm doing um, kind of just an outline of where I'm headed with this. And this is because I'm going to add a bunch of stuff in over the top and I don't want any of these colors to blend with any of the other colors. I'm still going to start with a wet base before I finish out the painting, but for this initial step I'm going to, these are going to kind of be like the shadows and um, well, the huge tree chunk is in a shadow, but you'll see there will be kind of like shadows and darkness happening in the background. So you want that there, but you don't want any of this part to blend or blend with your other paints. So it's just going to make things a little bit easier down the road. And obviously this can be whatever you want it to be. Like if you want a tree off to the side, put it off to the side. If you want it smack in the middle, put it there. If you, I mean, you, you know, your imagination is where your limits are. So. I actually find that I'm terribly limited when I start doing this. I always just, I don't know. But as soon as I get going, I'll find that things begin to happen and things start being a little more fluid and it gets a little easier. But I just have to actually start. And that's really the hardest part for me because I'm like, ah. Oh. This is like one of the things Bob Ross says. You guys know that I adore him. He's the whole reason I ever started doing any of this. But he always says you have to make a big decision. And for whatever reason, it really does feel like this huge de decision just starting. Just putting a tree in or whatever it's going to be. It's like, oh, that is a huge de decision. Do I want that there? Oh, I don't know. But then once you get going, it's like, oh, that's fine. It'll be okay. Okay, so this is obviously just going to be the shaded background of the tree. It has like a general shape, but it doesn't matter too much. This is not going to be the end appearance. This is just giving us depth for the background of the tree that we want. And it's going to help with lighting and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's just, I'm just messing around right now. So the big whooshing strokes right there, they're coming off just a little bit too dry. So I'm kind of getting an idea of where I want them, but then I'm going to come in a bit later and add water to kind of help transition them out so that it's dark fading into light. It's really hard to do with just a dry paintbrush with some paint on it and then on top of dry paint which is why you guys know you usually start with a wet background, but we don't want that for this part right here. So I'm just kind of getting an idea and putting things in where I think they should be, and then I'll go in and uh, fix it later with a little bit more water. So here's where you can see me adding the water. It's a very quick mist and I'm just throwing it on there. I'm not dipping my brush in any more paint because I want it to feather out the paint that I already have on there. And this paint reacts really well, reactivates really well with water. So you don't have to use a ton. And I know this looks absolutely crazy and terrible, but 
it's mostly going to be covered up. It's just giving us the dark and the light that we need for the final painting. So I typically get out colors that I think I'm going to use. This was where my mind was going with it and I ended up not using all of them. Like the blue color I didn't, I didn't use. That's not true. I put it in my general finishes. This is a clear base. Um, I did put a little bit in the clear base just to give me a blue background. But that's it. I didn't use the blue for any part of the actual painting. So this stuff is great. Obviously we did all that background work so you don't want to have an opaque paint color over the top of it that's going to cover up all the work that we did. But we do want the paint to be mobile and be able to blend with the other colors that I'm putting on initially. So that's why you use a clear base. And this is going to be, it's tinted blue just because we want it to be a little deeper and darker. And it will also help tint the other colors that way as well. So that's just the mellow white again, and I'm just brightening up that spot there. And then as I'm going out, I'm fading it out. And you can see I'm just using the corner of the brush. This isn't the whole brush. This is me dipping in the corner and then feathering it out. And then I'll kind of use the other side to blend out the rest so that it's not fully opaque everywhere. But you can see how well the clear base really helps to soften out the color and blend it out. As I'm going, I'm just kind of cleaning up the clear stuff. It, I thinned it out too much, so I'm trying to make sure it's not as thin. Um, and then I started out doing the background trees with my large brush. And it was just looking a little too condensed, like it was just too much. I couldn't see a lot of individual branches, so I ended up switching over to the fan brush just to give me a little more individuality between each kind of limb, branch type thing I want going on. So. This will be fine for the background, but as I go further and kind of add more on, I'll end up using the fan brush just because I find that you can see it a little bit better. And you will find brushes that you like better for certain things. So I love this big brush for doing like the large trees on top. It works really well for that and it does grass and like meadowy type things perfectly. I love it. But currently the fan brush is my favorite for doing like tree leaves full of like flowers or you know whatever time of year you're doing it. I really like the fan brush for, for doing that. And you'll see once I start putting it on there, it's like, oh okay, that's I understand. So as you can see, the purples I'm actually doing the same way that I had the light and dark. So I have a lighter purple closer to the bright white color and then I've got a deeper purple when I'm coming in closer to the black part. And it's okay if you get any color on top of like the black trees that we've put in because those are going to be gone over again when I do the bark and all that stuff. But for now, this is where we're at. See, I tried out that other little brush, wasn't a fan for this specific thing. And then I have just a liner brush here and I'm going in with a slightly darker shade for each section to do like limbs and branches on those background trees. They don't have to be perfect because it's in the background. You can't really, you're not supposed to be able to see the full trees. It's supposed to just be so far away that you're seeing a huge bunch of trees off in the distance. This is a very full forest. I find this is one of the hardest things for me is trying to be random about where I'm putting 
tree limbs. I don't know why it's so difficult for me, but I don't know. It's just, it's hard for me to put them on in certain spots where I'm like, oh, would a branch be there like that? Would it even look like that? Do I have to twist the brush a little more to get it a little wiggly? I don't know. This is, that's like one of the hardest things for me is figuring out where to put branches because I don't want it to look too like it was made by a human instead of by nature, if you know what I mean. So now that we have the background purples in and then we have the limbs in, now we can go over with our highlighter colors and add in the finishing touches on those background trees. Again, they don't have to be perfect because they are in the background, um, so they don't have to be super, super detailed, but it's nice having them there. Yeah, you can just see that fan brush. It just... It's like, oh, I get it, it's a tree now, instead of just weird blobs. And I literally just load up the tip of this and kind of am pushing down. Not terribly hard, depending on the tree well, that you're making will kind of depend on how you want to place the brush down. Again, I just kind of mess around and hope for the best when I do these. I, I think that's a great way to learn and, and get practice in and kind of try and get better. And I'd still like to be way better than I am now, but it is fun learning and trying to figure it, everything out. So as I go along, I like to kind of bring the colors over the lip of the drawers. I don't mind if it's not perfectly matching, but I do want it to carry over some semblance of the image when you open the door so it's not just a crazy blank spot or weird colors or whatever. So I'll kind of just do like a fadey situation when I'm coming up over the top just so that it's not so disjointed when you open the drawers. So now that I'm coming into the foreground, I can start adding my greens, which would be the colors that you would kind of see if you were actually up close. So that's why green's getting put in here. And then we can go through and highlight those. So I'm choosing a deep green now, and then we can go over and highlight later on. But you always want your darker color in the back to look like the shadow, and then you can add lighter colors on top to bring in the light. I showed you those colors in front of me. I usually always have some kind of palette, and by palette I mean giant lid to something, or some kind of plastic situation that I can mix stuff around on to keep using the same colors but add dark or light or tint them one way or the other. It's just much easier than having out so many colors of paint. Um, I do that too sometimes. I know that if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll see some of the things where I have like two rows of paint out and I feel like I really need all those colors. And sometimes I don't use all of them, but it's nice knowing they're there, I guess. It's like a comfort thing. But for this one, I know that it's going to be fairly simple. So I just use a few colors and then I can adjust them as needed. So for the trees, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do the bark. I had a few different ways in my head and I just kind of wanted to try things that I hadn't tried before. This one was okay. I, I mean, it would work. I just felt like I couldn't get the colors quite right. I was really struggling with the bark on these trees. So you'll see me do it a few times and try and get it somewhere that I liked when I looked at it. But I know that obviously the light side has to be on the left and the dark side has to be on the right, so I'm making sure those colors are going in there and I'm still giving texture to the trees.
And then I just kind of start randomly building in the foreground, adding to the top to the trees. Just going around wherever I see something that I want to start adding and then I know that it's closer to the foreground that I can start doing it because you have to get all your background stuff in first and then build on top of that. So I'm kind of just deciding when that time is happening. And then here for these trees, you do want to make sure that you don't cover up all of the black in the background because you need that to add the depth. So make sure you're not covering all that up if you're doing something like this. I feel so silly telling you guys what to do. I barely know what I'm doing. Just watch someone who does. I just think this is really fun. I decided I needed a swing and like a little path here and then of course the ground was just too green so I needed to add flowers and I just did that with the fan brush it was super easy to just add that color in but I got better at my path this time just from learning from the last dresser because that path really really gave me a hard time it's funny like the things changed like this one i was like oh okay i really like this path but i was struggling with the tree trunks and usually tree trunks don't give me any issues but for whatever reason I'm not a fan of these ones so it just changes and i mean you know i always say it's just paint you can fix it you can go over it you can make it different you can do whatever you want okay i'm just gonna keep painting but speed it up a bit and I'm just going over things till I like it.
All right, now for that drawer bottom, I just have um, just a scrap piece of board here. I usually have these on hand in my shop because sometimes you need backer board or whatever. Um, so I'm tracing out the old one, it's the original, trace that out, cut out the new one and slide it right in. The one that I have is slightly thinner because I can't find boards this size anymore. <laughs> they did things a little bit differently. And instead of the 20 nails along the back, we're just going to do one because that's all you need. This thing fits in perfectly fine and it's not going anywhere with just the one nail in the back. Would it even be one of my videos without gilding wax? Probably not, so we should probably just do some anyways. Now this is copper. I chose copper because I thought it would be very subdued on this dark green color and just give it a little bit of fans without being too over the top because that's kind of the route I was taking with this one. I just scrub it on. I love using these waxes with stencils because you don't get bleed through and it just... I don't know, there's just something about it. Now I'm going to seal the entire thing with the one coat polyurethane. This is like the triple thick stuff. It's not my favorite, not my least favorite. It works, it's fine. It's just what I have on hand. Oh hi, Taryn here with Ellie Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how I feel about this one. So I wanted to keep the kind of old grungy vibe that this guy already had. I loved the alligator finish. Anytime I get a piece with like that old alligator finish, I just, I love it. I love to embrace it. I don't wanna get rid of it. Um, a lot of times it's on these old, like solid wood, no veneer pieces. So you could get, the, get it off pretty easily. But I just, I like the charm of it and I wanted to keep that. And so there's like a little crackle in the paint, a little bit of that textured finish. And I wanted to do a painting that kind of went with it too. I tried to get the tree trunks like super grungy and I don't think I quite got there. I, I feel like the, the purple maybe is too, too glowy for what I was trying to do with like the dark finish because you saw the top kind of had that um, ombre and stained from the edges. All I did was clean that up. I didn't want to remove that. I really liked that. I liked that it looked like somebody beat the top of it with a chain at some point. I just, I wanted to keep with that. And so the same with the paint, obviously this piece has been painted before um, and then it was taken back. And then, so I kind of just, you guys know if it's an older piece like this, I really like to just embrace it and know that it's done some living and and I want it to keep on living. So we'll see how this one does. I love the sides. I love the top still. I love all this dark green. It's just, oh, I kind of like the path and the swing too. I just feel like I couldn't quite get the background where I wanted it to look as old. I feel like it looks more like a storybook instead of the feel I was going for. 
it's fine. You guys know I'm still learning. I just started this whole thing last year, so it's still pretty new to me trying to figure things out. I've been practicing some different trees and things like that, and it's, yeah, it's fun. It's very, it's very fun, and it's great learning, and I obviously still don't know everything. <laughs> I know, I mean, I'll never know everything, but we can all hope, right? Um, anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for following along, even on the pieces where I'm just not quite sure at the end. I really appreciate you guys just knowing that it's a journey for me to get there and I hope that I'm inspiring somebody else to know that everything's kind of a journey and we're all just trying to make things beautiful as as we go and live our lives. So again, thank you so much. I hope you had the most amazing new year. I hope 2023 brings you just so much joy and happiness and you guys bring so much of that to my life. So I just want the best for you as well. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you all so much. Have a happy new year and I'll see you next week.